Hey everyone, it's Jenna. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to do a really simple, easy DIY footed bowl. And then I'm gonna show you how I arrange my florals. And this is really great for spring, but it can honestly translate into any season if you just swap up your florals. So it's gonna be really fun and budget friendly because if you guys are familiar with this channel, you know that we are all about the budget friendly DIYs and making things look a lot more expensive than they are. These would make great gifts. They'd be great for weddings or if you have a spring or an Easter gathering coming up, or if you just want to enjoy a pretty pop of florals for yourself on your dining table, console table, kitchen counter, whatever. So without further ado, let's get into the project. Okay, so I got the idea for this project when I was scrolling through vases and pedestals on A Floral, which is one of my favorite places to get faux florals, by the way, but I came across this whitewash bowl pedestal and I really love the look of it. I liked how it could be used with casual, simplistic decor with some plain stems or greenery popped in it, or it could be used for a more formal arrangement for an event or a party. I really like the versatility of it and I also really like the subtle rustic look it had, so I decided to try to DIY something similar which is maybe some more simple modern lines. So I started shopping for my supplies at Walmart and I found this mixing bowl set for just a hair under $6, which is going to be our large bowl mold. And then I found this little mini bowl for just under two bucks. And this is gonna be our mold for the base of the base. So next I just went to the Home Depot and picked up some rapid set mortar mix. I got the smaller box and this will make roughly about three bowl pedestals. So they do have quick crete too, which is an even cheaper option that would work, but I just went for the mortar mix because I had worked with this product before and I knew that I liked the end result. But if you wanna save some money, you could go with the quick crete option as well. So just to give you guys a little visual, this is gonna be how we will be using the mixing bowl set as a mold for our large bowl. And these are the two largest ones in the set and if you want to save even more money, you can just use one of the smaller bowls in the mixing bowl set for the base. I personally wanted to have mine very chunky, sturdy, and have really simple lines, so that's why I purchased this black one instead. So next it was time to prepare our mortar mix and this stuff dries up quickly so you kind of have to work fast here. The directions call for four parts mix to one part water. So I just used one of my leftover bowls that I had from the mixing bowl set. I measured out four scoops of the mix and then I added one bowl of water. And you want your mixture to have the consistency similar to a milkshake. So it takes a little bit of mixing if you're doing this by hand and you don't have an electric mixer. But once you get it to that smooth milkshake consistency, you know it's ready to pour. And then to prevent the dried mortar from sticking to the molds, I just sprayed them down with some WD-40 that we had laying around. You definitely wanna make sure that you grease these in some way so that when you take them out once the mortar has dried that it doesn't stick to the mold. So I just scooped the mortar mix into my first bowl, which will be the base. And then for our larger bowl that will go on top, I just again sprayed that down with WD-40, scooped some mix into the bowl. And because we will be pressing the smaller bowl onto it, you don't need to fill up the whole bowl with mix. I would say for mine, roughly, I filled it just a tad below below halfway full and then I just sprayed the other bowl with WD-40 as well and then I pressed it on there until the level of the mortar mix reached almost the top of the edges. And then to make sure the bowl stayed in place, I just weighed them down with a paint can that I had laying around. I did end up getting one more paint can and then I had two of them on there just to make sure it was really holding it down there. And then I let both of them dry for about an hour. And it's honestly crazy how fast these things dry. It's actually kind of nice. You can just go do some laundry, dishes, watch a TV show, whatever. And then they are already dry and pop right out of the mold. So I had no problems with the smaller bowl, but the larger one was a little bit Bit more difficult so I ended up just taking it over to a softer surface and just kind of gave it a little soft slam on the ground and then it came right out no problem and then because of how my mixing bowls edges were shaped it just left a little bit of a line in print that bothered me so I mixed up a really little amount of mortar again and filled those gaps in so the edges just looked a bit more seamless I still wanted this bowl to have an overall rustic look so I did leave some gaps and cracks on the edge still but I just filled in some of the parts so that it didn't look like I had used a mold with a line all the way around you know just a little bit more put together and solid and then it was time to attach the two pieces together so I just used some of this gorilla glue and I spread a little bit onto both the bottom of the bowl and then to the top of the base and I just placed it on there made sure it was even and I let that dry overnight and then voila the next day I had a gorgeous footed bowl and if you don't want to use this for a flower arrangement there's still so many different ways you could use this around your home. You could use 
this as console table styling decor by elevating it on a stack of books and then placing some beads in the bowl for some added visual interest. I feel like this can easily dress up a space and make it look very high-end and designer. You could also pop it on a kitchen countertop and add some faux bowl filler. However, I wouldn't put anything in here that you're actually gonna eat, just decorative stuff, you know, but I feel like some faux fruit or decorative bowl filler would accent it really nicely. Also, you can just simply pop it on a shelf if you need some extra shelf styling decor. But what I'm personally gonna use this for is a base to a statement floral arrangement. And I always like to start my arrangements by putting them on a Lazy Susan, just so I can turn it easily and have 360 degree styling access. So for our floral foam, I was able to find this half circle shape at Walmart that perfectly fit inside the footed bowl that I made. Now you can totally use real flowers or fake ones for this project. And I know that can be a very touchy subject, but I personally opted for faux stems just because I wanted this to last all season long and I just feel like this way I get the most out of my effort and money and if you're careful about your floral selection it can honestly end up looking super realistic. So I kind of have a formula that I go by when picking florals and stems for an arrangement like this. And the first thing that I always look for are statement florals. And these are the main large focal flowers that will anchor your arrangement. And I like to pick things like roses, hydrangeas, or peonies, preferably with leafy stems and a bud or two attached to them, just because I think this looks a lot more realistic and varied. And these will kind of act as the main focal points of your arrangement. So you really wanna make sure that these ones look authentic, they're the right color scheme you want, and that they have some realistic looking leaves attached to them. So once I've picked out my statement florals, the next thing I look for are the smaller gathered stems. And these will kind of act as the accents to the statement florals. And I personally like to look for wildflower-like stems that almost seem like they could have been plucked out of a colorful field on the side of the road because I feel like this keeps the arrangement feeling light and whimsical. And unlike the statement florals, these will usually be smaller in size and usually have a lot more flowers per stem. So then the last thing I look for are my green stems, and these will really help ground the arrangement and give us a great base to play off of with our colorful florals. And when looking for greenery, I typically like to get at least three different types just so it keeps the arrangement feeling varied and found, kind of like I just went outside and gathered what I could find. And I will have all of the faux stems that I used listed in the description box, as well as a count of how many of each stem I used in this specific arrangement. So let's get started on building this beauty. So of course, I always like to keep my handy dandy wire cutters nearby since a lot of these stems will need to be cut down. And I usually like to start with ferns or a really full and flat greenery stem that just helps to fill in the base a little bit and hides the floral foam. So I just took five of these and arranged them in a star-like shape just to give this arrangement a solid foundation. So once I have that bottom layer of greenery all set, I like to just add two longer pieces of greenery. And you can kind of think of these stems as giving the piece wings. They're really just going to help stretch this arrangement and give it some width. And then next we have the fun part, adding in the statement florals. And I like to spread these evenly out all over the piece. And once you add in a couple, you can kind of see that they quickly become the face of the arrangement. And once these are in, all we really have left to do after that is just fill in around them. So their placement is kind of important, but if you concentrate too many in one area or just need to move some around, it's super easy to just pluck them out and move them somewhere else. I like to put majority of my statement florals in, but then just save a couple for future empty spots that I might need to fill in later. So next it's time to add in our gathered stem pieces and these really help give the arrangement some body and dimension and just help distribute a little more color and variety throughout. And I like to have these guys stick out a little bit further than the statement florals and I just kind of rotate the piece around looking for those bigger bald patches that need some filling in. And I try to evenly distribute these as best I can but because these florals are more on the whimsical wildflower like side, it's okay if their placement is more random and scattered and while I'm adding in the gathered stems, sometimes I see big bald spots and just add a couple of my leftover statement florals just to fill in the rest. And as I'm working, I also fluff the leaves of my florals a bit just to kind of spread them out and make the arrangement appear fuller. 
So next I'm gonna go in with my second type of gathered stem and I really liked these ones and I wanted to potentially use them in other vases later. So to avoid cutting them with the wire cutters, I just bent them a couple of times in an accordion like shape so that I could still easily stick them in this arrangement but also really easily take them out and reuse them later. So I really liked these specific stems and I really liked their mauve pinky color and how they just add a slightly more muted pink tone to this arrangement overall. And that is one thing that I like to keep in mind when picking out florals is color tone. I like to usually pick out one overall color family for the statement florals and then I just get slight variations of that same color for the gathered stems. But if you want to combine more colors, picking out more vibrant smaller gathered stems would be a really great place to layer in some more color. And then lastly I just add in some finishing greenery to close in any of the leftover gaps and I think that olive stems are so so pretty in floral arrangements or bouquets and they are honestly one of my go-tos for finishing off an arrangement. I found these guys on Etsy for a really affordable price and you can see this just really helps make it look very organic and finished and this is what it looks like when I was done. There is one more thing that I like to do just to add some extra elegance for a really cheap price and that is adding a cheesecloth runner. I got mine at Hobby Lobby for six dollars and I feel like this is such an affordable way to dress up a table for a gathering, a wedding, a party, whatever. I actually use this for my Christmas table setup this past year and I just really love how it adds a very simplistic elegance to the overall look of the tablescape and is way cheaper than any fancy runner that you'll find in the store and I also like to put two on top of each other and kind of scrunch them up to give the cloth a really textured casual lived-in look. And that is really it, you guys. I am so happy with how this turned out and how this really just brightens and freshens up my space as the weather warms up here. And I love how this flower arranging method is super versatile. Like I mentioned before, you can totally use real flowers for this as well if you are just not into the faux floral thing. You can also tweak the color scheme as much or as little as you want. And you can also do this with dried florals if that's more your thing as well. The options are really endless to customize it to your specific preferences, but I'm super proud of this and I am I'm so happy with how realistic we were able to get this thing to look even though we used faux florals and I honestly feel like you can't even tell and I'm just so glad I'm going to get to enjoy this arrangement all season long. All right, you guys, so that about wraps up this video. I hope that you enjoyed and maybe felt a little bit inspired to create either a footed bowl or a floral arrangement of your own. And I hope that now that spring is kind of on its way, that you guys are graced with some warmer temperatures out there. And I wanna thank you guys all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I kindly ask you give this video a thumbs up. Maybe even leave me a comment if you guys have time because I really appreciate that and it really helps to grow and support my channel. So thank you guys again so, so much for watching. and. I will see you all in my next video. Bye.